Hello everyone. We're going to look at a tool called Binwalk today and in the spirit of uh, merging hacking with outdoor adventures and things like that, we're going to be uh, examining some firmware for my fish finder. Uh, this particular fish finder, you can download an update from the manufacturer's website and within the actual update is all the files that actually run the fish finder in there. We're going to look at, take, we're going to take a look at how to actually extract that and look and see what's in there. And I've downloaded the firmware already. I'm using, also using Kali Linux, which has been well installed by default. And you can set up a virtual machine, then install the parallel tools. And it's easy enough to just drag the file over there. All right. So this is our firmware right here, redacted.udp. I changed the name as to not identify the fish finder manufacturer. So we'll, first of all, we'll extract it, binwalk dash e redacted.udp and we'll let it run all right and now we have a directory underscore redacted.udp.extracted so let's take a look and see what's in there i've enlarged my screen so i'm probably going to hit clear a lot just to make it a little bit more manageable to navigate and actually see so we have some files at this point we have zero.tar on the left hand side, all the way over to usr.tar.xz. So these are, we can take a look at the update file, which is the sh script. And there is some uh, bash script in here. And this will, uh, Basically, it's one of the files it runs when it does the update. There's a whole lot of different uh, commands in here and things like that. I don't want to get too far into the weeds on that, analyzing that. So where do we start? Um, root.tar.xz looks interesting to me. Um, root is the uh, is most associated with Linux and the Linux file system. So let's untar that. If I can enter a valid tar command. And we'll do root.tar.xe. Not, okay. That particular uh, tar command didn't work. So let's try xvf and see if we can get that. Hey, look at that. It worked. Now, what do we have? All right. We have a bunch of directories now that are extra, like bin, boot, dev, etsy, home, lib, media, mount, proc, root, run, sbin, share, sys, temp, user, and bar. So this is a Linux file system. It very much looks like. So if we look in bin, we see some executables and some commands that can be ran. And taking a look in boot, nothing in there dev nothing we have etsy oh there's stuff in etsy interesting so let's take a look all right so we have a debug log file systems let's take a look at file systems okay we have several different file systems listed here in uh, etsy file systems fs tab UBI zero slash home, where to mount this when it starts up and runs. Uh, let's take a look at the group. So these are typical Linux groups that I would expect to see in a Linux operating system. All the way from root down to whatever this user is, TIIPC. Digging further here. Host.conf, let's take a look at that. Order host by multi-own. Let's take a look at hosts. Are there any manual hosts here? Nope, we just have local host, which is 127.0.0.1, which is the local host machine. This is a default entry. If we wanted to specify another system we could enter the ip address here in that system name and we wouldn't have to query dns we could just get there that way <clears throat> local time mod probe mtab let's 
sys nope, ntp.conf what ntp servers network time protocol servers are in here uh the default ntp time servers password so we have a number of users here so these are the actual users that are on this particular flavor of linux we have root all the way down to touch d okay and etsy shadow will be so the root this is the encrypted password. You can't make out exactly what the password is. And this is the encrypted password. Now, it's possible to reverse this password hash, but I'm not gonna get into that. This is looks like very much like the defaults, what I would expect to see here, or it's been changed. Can't make it out either way, but we're not gonna get into cracking passwords because that's not what this video is about. This video is just about extracting firmware and examining the contents uh, that it, it extracts. So we have shells. What shells are on here? So it just has bin sh. So static routes, SSL certificates in SSL. If we wanted to get into that, ts.conf. Not sure off the top of my head what that is. I have to dig into it. In version, what flavor of Linux is this? This is NOS Linux, NOS Linux, platform 38025. So I'll have to dig into that and learn some more about it. All right, backing up. Actually, go back over here back to our root directory so we had Etsy nothing in home library files not going to get too much into that media factory data Run empty share manuals. And thing in temp var empty. Oh, just var cache. Let's take a look at this standard tar dot tar x so we'll tar xvf standard and looks like uh, potentially some binary files there's a language pack let's take a look at this file Translation file. This one strings against this file. Strings looks for consecutive ASCII characters within files. So we have, are you sure you want to delete all the waypoints with this symbol? So this is part of the configuration for setting waypoints. It looks like within the GPS functions of this particular fish finder. Okay. What else do we have here that might be interesting? Um, Splashy.tar.xz. Let's take a look at that. Let's extract it. Ah, so we have, now we're getting into the actual configuration files. So we have an XML file for log logo progress, full screen text, logo themes. 
So the various themes that are within the fish finder and the screens, logo progress, okay. So we would find those there. I'm not gonna get into too much of that. Um, let's take a look at USR, tar x vf user dot tar dot tar x z. So we have, whoa, there's quite a bit in there. Okay. So we have, looking at this, some fonts, TTF, true type fonts, more fonts, configuration files, sonar. So now we have a sonar bin file, boat plan PNG. So now we're getting more into the configuration of the fish finder looks like. Connect failure tools, pictures to go along with that, icons, simulator, part of that function. There was quite a bit of stuff in here. So if we wanted to look at those particular files, which I want, I won't do that for this particular uh, video because I'm not getting into actually looking at this. It's more about using Binwalk, extracting a piece of firmware and determining how the file system is laid out as opposed to actually getting into and modifying the fish finder files. But if I wanted to do that, let's say I wanted to do something and modify my fish finder. I didn't like a certain theme or something like that. I would extract the firmware. As you see here, I'd go in and cre create my own theme and I could modify it, change it up however I want to be, then potentially recompile it, compress it and install the update onto my fish finder. Then that theme would be available to me. Um, that would be one aspect of why I would be doing this. Or maybe I wanted to make it compatible with another piece of software or another pe another device, perhaps. I would go in there and add the appropriate code to make the, my particular fish finder compatible with my other devices or some software, maybe Bluetooth with my Apple Watch or phone or something like that. If I wanted to get into uh, something that deep, that might take a while to figure out and, and, and uh, integrate into the fish finder firmware. But if we were going to do that, this is probably the route where I would start doing that. We have various languages in here as well. <clears throat> Zero.tar, let's take a look at that. So we have some more. Looks like that. I had some duplicate files within there. I'm not sure yet. We get the language pack. Standard. Doc looks interesting. So within here are various doc files. Nothing I want to dig into in there. Let's clear the screen. Going back into media. All right. <clears throat> so let's take a look and see how much space all this actually uses uses right now. 434 megabytes total. So again, when we extracted this, we uh, determined that it was a Linux file system because we these are these are these are all files I would expect to find in a Linux file system. Absolutely, you wouldn't expect to see some of these in Windows. We got our various routes, uh, password file which contains our users, shadow file which contains the hashed passwords and uh, network configuration and all that. And we also saw when we extracted some of these, the actual theme files for the fish finder. If we wanted to go in there and edit our own theme or make it interactive with something else, we could go pursue it that route. Yeah, save our changes in the firmware, compress it, and then install it on our fish finder and potentially make that available to us. 
So this is one example of how you can use Benwalk to learn more about the uh, tools you have. I like to do this with IoT devices, especially if you're looking at uh, wireless routers and things like that, or wireless thermostats, or something that has firmware that you can download, install, to update it. I always like to take and extract the firmware with Benwalk and actually take a look at it and see what's going on inside there. Several times I have found vulnerabilities doing this, especially with wireless routers. You get to the actual login page for the administrator functions and you enter your username and password to get in there and you start uh, administering your router. Well, it turns out sometimes the security isn't all that great. And if you know the URLs to some of the pages, the sub pages, sub configuration pages, you can access those, those directly without entering the username and password. So that's an insecure direct op object reference vulnerability, and that's bad. Uh, then someone who comes over or potentially uh, a bad actor gets access to your network that can get into your router and change your configuration and things like that. That also happens with various other IoT devices as well. I've seen that happen. All right, that's all for this video. We have combined hacking with the outdoors using Benwalk to extract a fish finder update, to extract firmware for a fish finder update. Took a look at the file system, determined it was Linux. We saw where the various theme files and configuration files were for the fish finder. We could modify those if we wanted to, but that's not what this video is about. This video is just about how to start exploring firmware updates with Benwalk. Uh, post questions below, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and all that, and we'll see you next video.